Hi everyone. So today is a very exciting day. It is officially the one year anniversary of me having started this YouTube channel and it has been a crazy year. It has been an exciting year. It has been a stressful year, all the things. And I will talk a little bit more about that in a bit, but I wanted to celebrate this fact today by doing a repot and chat video with you guys. And I did ask you guys to submit questions you had for me. So I am gonna be answering those questions while we repot some plants today. And then later on, I will also kind of let you know some of the things I've been reflecting on looking back over this first year of having this channel. And then probably also some of my goals that I have for the channel in the upcoming year as well. But before we get started, I just want to say a very sincere and heartfelt thank you to all of you who have been here throughout this year. And I don't care if you came in the last week. I don't care if you've been here since the beginning. I cannot do this without the support of you guys. You guys are what keep me going and doing this, knowing that I'm helping you guys, getting the comments from you guys, saying how much I've helped you having fun planting discussions with you. I mean, it, that's why I do this, you guys. That's why I do this. That's what drives me to do this. And so thank you so much for all of your continued support. But the first plant we are gonna be repotting today is my Calathea warscoesii. So for those of you who don't remember, this plant did flower for me right around, well, on New Year's Day actually is when the first flowers started to come in. So hopefully you can see that flower right there. This is the only one that's still on here. I did cut the other ones off as they were becoming spent. And as you can see where I cut the other ones off, we are starting to get new leaves coming out already. These are super tall because they were the shoots that got the flowers, but I mean, they still have beautiful leaves on them. So I didn't really feel the need to cut them off, but I am pretty sure this plant is massively root bound for several reasons. One, it's been doing this crap to me every single week. One of these happens. Now, thankfully it is putting out a ton of new leaves. So it's definitely making up for all of the yellowed ones that it's throwing at me. I think we have another one starting to turn yellow over here as well. But seeing a plant start to do this, knowing it's not overwatered or underwatered or anything like that is one of the signs that this plant might be potentially severely root bound and in need of repotting. Also, I've been having to water this plant a lot more frequently, and that is another good indicator that we probably need to be repotted. But let's go ahead and get this guy out of his pot and let's see if it's as root bound as I think it is. Just kind of squeeze around here. And then I'm gonna be super gentle as I pull this plant out. I feel like it's so delicate. It's probably stronger than I like to think it is, but you know, let's see if we can get this off. Ooh. Oh yeah. Yep, that is pretty freaking root bound right there. Definitely the problem. So we are gonna be taking this up. This is in a six inch pot right now. We're gonna take it up to an eight inch pot. To be honest with you guys, this eight inch pot, like it looks huge to me. Like, look at that. Like it looks massive. But then when you put this in here, it's really, it's not, it's not that massive. Like it's not that much more space. It just looks that big, like, when you're looking at it side by side. So I think it'll be fine. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a tray and set this guy down over here gently. Good news is those roots all look super healthy. So I'm really excited that it is just that it's severely root bound is why it's behaving the way it's behaving. So we are gonna be putting this guy into my forest floor mix. I have been gradually migrating all of my Calathea into my forest floor mix. They seem to be happier when they're in that mix. A lot of them previously I had in my basic mix, which was just soil and perlite, but I really think they like the added chunkiness and the cocoa core that I add into my forest floor mix. But I think I have a tray over here that's large enough to put this pot on. Yep, that works. All right, so I'm just gonna start filling this in and getting this guy repotted, and we're gonna start answering some of the first questions you guys had. Real quick though, because Calatheas are a little bit sensitive, they have very fine root systems, and they really don't particularly like to be repotted in the first place. I mean, he's gonna be happy because now he can spread out more, but they go through shock a little bit easier than some other plants when repotting, so I am definitely not gonna mess with those roots. Not messing with them at all today. But let's see, what is our first question? I've got our list over here, so I can make sure I didn't miss anything. All right, you guys asked some really good questions, but there, there's a couple of them that I wanna address first. A lot of you were asking me about why I started my channel. I actually do have a video entirely about that. It's a repot and chat video. 
interestingly enough. So I'm not gonna get fully into that because it's a very kind of long story. I'm not gonna get into that today, but I will link that video in the description below for you guys. And then also a lot of you guys were asking about my shakiness. And I realized we have gotten a lot more subscribers in the last few months. And so, and it's probably been a few months since I've addressed why I shake, but I actually have a neurological condition. It's called essential tremors. You may also sometimes hear something called familial tremors. That just basically means it runs in your family. You're not the first person in your family to have it. It's pretty much still the same exact condition. It is neurological. It is something that is entirely out of my control. So it's not like I'm shaking because I'm nervous or anything like that. Now, if I were nervous, it would make it worse. Always things like that make it worse. Caffeine makes it worse. Adrenaline makes it worse. And you know, some days it's just better than others. And I have a pretty severe case of it. So it actually affects my hands, my legs and my head. And so I have a hard time at the eye doctor. Let me just put it that way. Usually somebody has to hold my head still for me when they're trying to like check my eyes quite annoying, but it's not anything bad. It's not like, you know, gonna cause some kind of issues down the line or anything like that. I don't have Parkinson's. I know a lot of people jump to that conclusion when they see that as well. It's just, it's just, it's just a thing. It's just a thing I've had to live with my whole life, but that's, that's why I, my hands are shaky. And you guys, when I'm doing like something big, like if I'm taking that plant out of this pot, you're not gonna notice it as much as if I'm trying to do something that requires like finite motor skills. Like if I'm trying to repot like in a two inch pot, a tiny little plant, you're gonna see me shaking a lot more because I'm having to try to maintain control in a tighter like space and things like that. But honestly, you guys, that's it. I will try to do a better job of reminding people in videos about that more frequently so that any new people who come along you know, they're gonna have the same question. And so that way we can make sure that everybody's getting updated as we get new subscribers to the channel. But let's see what our next question is. And you know what? I think I'm gonna have to go grab some more soil real quick. Give me one second. Okay, so we are back in business. So our next question, multiple of you asked me this question and I was kind of like, I don't know, this is a difficult question to answer, but you guys had asked like, if I could only grab five plants, like. I guess like if there was a fire in my house or whatever, like if I could only grab five plants, which five would I grab? So I guess it's like, what are your top five favorite plants? But I don't know, that's like a really hard question to answer. I mean, well, first of all, if there was a fire in the house, Toby's the first thing I'm grabbing, right? And secondly, you know, obviously <laughs> I would be restricted to whatever plants were close by as to which ones I would be grabbing and bringing with me. Now, I realize y'all weren't being like that realistic when you asked that question, but you know, th that's, that's the fact. So that's kind of like how I initially was kind of like thinking about it, but I'm just looking around at my plants. I don't know you guys, that's a really, really hard question. Oh, I don't know. I definitely think I would grab my Monstera Thai Constellation. I've been wanting one of those for a while and it is like one of the more like pricey plants that I own. And then, I don't know. Oh, guys, that is a really hard question. I don't know how people make decisions like that. It's just so difficult. There's so many great plants. There's so many beautiful plants. I'd probably grab my Anthurium sil Silver Blush since that is the only Anthurium I own and it is one of the newest plants and I'm totally digging on it right now. I also think I would grab my Variegated Hoya Carnosa Compacta. Absolutely love that plant, I love it. It's also, once again, one of the pricier ones. I kind of feel like you guys, like the pricier plants are the ones I would grab just cause it's gonna be like more expensive to replace. And a lot of those pricier plants are some of like my most beloved plants. So yeah, I think I would probably just grab the top five, probably most expensive plants that I own. So that would probably be the Monstera, obviously the Monstera Thai Constellation, that variegated Hoya Carnosa Compacta, my variegated String of Hearts, I'm trying to think, my Alocasia Cupria. How many plants was that? Was that five? I should try to count while I'm saying this out loud, you guys. And my Anthurium Silver Blush. Those are the five I'm going with. Those are the five. And I realize that is probably a very practical answer and maybe you guys were hoping for like a little bit more of a sentimental one. But I mean, those are, like I said, some of my like favorite plants right now as well. But I mean, it's just, the fact of the matter is they're just gonna be, the other plants are all gonna be easier to replace, honestly. So if we're talking about me having to potentially start over 
that's my answer. And you know what, you guys? Interesting story. I did have a lady come a couple weeks ago now to buy some of the plants that I'm selling and she just casually mentioned and then she just brushed it off like it was nothing. I was like, did she really just say that? Like she was buying plants because she's having to replace her plants because she lost them all in a fire. It was one of the saddest things I had heard. And I was like, oh my gosh. And like, yeah, and then that was it. She just like moved on. I was like, can we talk about this a little bit more? Like, oh my God, what happened? Like, is everybody human and pet okay? Was it just the plants in the house that was the casualty? Oh, it was so sad, you guys. I felt so bad. Oh, that is horrible. I can't even imagine. I cannot even imagine. Let's, let's move on to cheerier topics, cheerier questions. Let's see, what else we got? Where is a reputable place to buy plants online? So you guys, this is kind of a little bit of a loaded question because I feel like everybody has different experiences from the same sellers online. A lot of it also has to do with the type of plants that you're buying. So some plants just don't ship well. It doesn't matter who's selling them and shipping them, they just don't ship well. I mean, imagine a donkey's tail. I can't even take that thing down and water it without leaves falling off of it. You ship that plant, there's no way it's gonna have any leaves still attached to it when it arrives. I, I mean, I can pretty much guarantee you. So just keep that in mind that that is a, a huge part of it. And honestly, you guys, most online sellers, if you tell them, hey, I'm interested in buying these plants, here's where I live. Can you tell me if these plants ship well or not? They will tell you if they ship well or not because it's in their best interest for the plants to survive their trip to you. So you can always reach out and ask, but if we're talking about locally for me, like if we're talking and by local, I mean like in mainland US, Steve's Leaves, is very trustworthy source. Like for example, last week when we were frozen in our houses for three days, they suspended shipping. Like they actually suspended shipping before the ice hit because it was already getting super cold outside. They won't ship if they feel like the plants aren't gonna make it. And so they just suspend shipping until it's warm enough for them to ship again. So I think that is very reputable. A lot of other sellers, online sellers don't do that. They ship no matter what and just assume you will order heat protection, you know, if it's too cold out. And if you don't, then they're gonna tell you that it's not their fault. You didn't order heat, heat protection. So I do recommend you guys, if you, especially if you live somewhere cold and you're ordering plants during a cold time of the year, definitely break out the extra bucks for the heat protection. It is worth it. Now I have also had very good luck personally with plants that I have purchased from Plant Arena. I know some of you have had different experiences. Feel free to share your experiences down below just so everybody kind of knows what happened. I will say that like I have, it's been over a year, okay? It's been over a year since I've ordered plants from Plants Arena. So there's always a possibility, you know, something's changed in that time. Maybe, you know, they've got new people working in the shipping department or whatever it may be, customer service, who knows? But when I was buying plants and I've ordered, I think, four or five total, I forget, from them, and they've all been fabulous. I've had no problems with them, and that's just my personal experience. So once again, if, if you have had problems, I'm not trying to you know, brush off the fact that you've had problems or your feelings on it. I'm just sharing my, my personal experience with it. I've had very good luck. Those are honestly the only two local or US online plant sellers that I've really bought from. I did buy one plant off of Etsy very early on in my plant journey. And I don't even remember what seller shop it was from. And honestly, I don't know that I would necessarily recommend them because I'm pretty sure that plant came in with spider mites. Definitely had them very soon thereafter. And it was the first plant I had ever had spider mites on in this house. So yeah, I'm kind of just thinking it came with spider mites, which is never good. I mean, it, it can happen, you guys. That's why we quarantine plants when we get new plants, but yeah, it, you know, this is definitely not what you wanna have happen. But yeah, I, Steve's Leaves is really just super reputable, you guys. I really highly recommend them, you know, and they're local, they actually are here, about 45 minute drive away from me. So the nice thing is, if I want to, I can actually just go pick the plant up, like order it and go pick it up from them versus having it shipped. Just kind of depends. Sometimes I still have it shipped because I don't have time to drive out there and back, but they are definitely an excellent source. So I think we've got this guy squared away. I am gonna give him a water down here in a bit. 
and I am gonna remove those two yellowing leaves, but let me go ahead and set him aside and grab our next plant that we need to repot. Okay guys, so my lemon lime maranta here has gotten quite a bit larger since the last time I repotted it, but honestly, lately it's been throwing some funky yellow leaf nonsense at me as well. And if you guys will remember a while back, one of the rhizomes grew out of the bottom of the pot and it has developed a vine. I don't know if you guys, I'm gonna have to try to move all the other foliage out of the way so you guys can see this. But if you see right here, that's that rhizome that came out of the bottom of the pot and we've already gotten two leaves, which is like kind of annoying. So I could just cut this off and pop it into some water and propagate it. We might do that. But if I do need to repot this, I might see if I can't just somehow cut the pot around it or pull that through. I don't know, but let's just see if he actually is like root bound or what is going on. Because once again, just all of a sudden out of nowhere, kind of misbehaving on me. Let's see if we can get this guy. I feel like I'm gonna make a giant mess. I just have decided nowadays, you guys, I don't even put anything down on this counter. I just make a mess. I can clean it up later. It's no, no big deal. It's fine. Potting mat, be damned. <laughs> like we're just gonna, Go with it. All right, come on you. Okay, here we go. Let the mess begin. Oh. We're a bit more root bound than I thought. I don't know if, oh. Okay, we're definitely repotting this guy. I don't know if that's why he's throwing the yellow leaves at me, but well, let me, I am gonna have to cut this one that's coming through the bottom off. Let me grab my snips and take care of that real quick first. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut this kind of right below where that growth is going on. Now we have our little guy right here and I'm just gonna pop this guy into some water here when we are done repotting of this guy. So now I should be able to get this out so that I can show you what I'm seeing. Oh, there we go, we're out. We're making a mess, but we're out. Okay, get this loose soil off. So one thing I hate about repotting vining plants, you guys, is the dirt just gets all over the plant when you're repotting it. It's kind of annoying. It's gonna need to shower down when we're done with this. But hopefully, if I can get him rotated around, you'll be able to see he is pretty freaking root bound, but the rhizome situation is nuts. It's nuts. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see here. Future Drea here. So I had a secondary camera set off to the left side of the screen, you guys, that was zoomed in on the plants that I was repotting. And apparently five minutes into the video, it cut off recording for some reason and I didn't notice. So I'm gonna use the best zoomed in shots I could grab for you so that you can see what I'm talking about in this brief section of the video. We are pretty root bound, definitely pretty root bound, but look down here, there's that rhizome. Look how tangled up it was in here. And then look what's going on over here. The rhizome pushed out two new shoots completely outside of the soil. It's definitely a good sign that this plant does need to be repotted. I don't wanna take it up hugely though. And the problem is the, this, the next size up I got is the eight inch, just like that plant we just did. I am gonna try to get a lot of this loose soil off of this one. There's kind of a funky smell going on in this soil. And by funky, I don't mean like root rot, but sometimes you guys, when you repot your plants, like if the soil's old, it, it smells old. I guess that's the best way I can explain it. It smells kind of like old soil. And it's not even that old, I think. I think we're almost at a year since I've repotted this plant, maybe in March or April, maybe. But yeah, I don't know, it's got that funky old soil smell. So I'm just gonna try to get as much of the loose stuff off as I can. Once again, I'm not gonna go messing with the roots too much or anything like that. And then I'm gonna mix up some more of my forest floor mix and we are gonna get this guy potted up. But in the meantime, back to your questions. So, Another question that I got from a lot of you was asking me about what other plant YouTubers I like or I follow. I feel like that is a loaded question, you guys. I, that question, I knew I was gonna get that question. I knew it and I'm always like hesitant to answer that question because I feel like I'm gonna piss somebody off because I don't know every single other plant channel there is out there, you guys. So like, I, I'm just like, I'm might not mention someone and it's somebody that you love and you're gonna be like, why didn't she mention this person? I might not know that person exists, you guys, just being honest with you. So yeah, it makes me kind of nervous to answer this question, but you know, I think 
most YouTubers, well, so I started off like the, there were two channels that I started watching when I first got into plants, just, just to like find out about plants. And then I kind of just liked the personality of the people. And one of them is one that I think almost every plant YouTuber, you know, they start off watching this channel and that is of course Plant Arena. I mean, super well-known, biggest followers. I mean, the algorithm, the YouTube algorithm serves up those videos like nothing else, right? And plus I've mentioned before, I think Amanda at Plant Arena is freaking hilarious. I'm sorry, she's funny. She is just funny and she is fun to watch because she's so freaking funny. And so that's kind of like where I started. And then I also fairly early on got really into the crazy plant guy who is based up in Canada. Now, unfortunately, he has not really been doing much in the way of YouTube videos for quite a while now because he did end up opening his own plant store and I'm, guarantee you that takes up a lot of his time. So he has not produced new videos, but if you have not checked him out before, all his existing videos are still valuable, valuable content over there. So definitely, you know, go check him out. As far as other YouTubers since then go, it's interesting because you guys were asking like, who, who are my favorites? It, once again, kind of a loaded question because I watch certain ones for different reasons, if that makes sense. I don't know. Let me set this guy down, get the soil we need in a pot, and then I'll finish explaining that to you. All right, you guys, I think I'm gonna be able to put that guy in this pot. He's sitting, like he's shorter from top to bottom than the last plant we did. So he's not gonna get any extra space in the bottom doing this, but this is quite a bit wider for him to expand out into. And I would just rather do that right now. I just feel like I don't like taking my prayer plants up into very bigger, deeper pots right away. I don't know. I feel like prayer plants like to spread outward more versus root downward. So we're gonna try this. And in case I didn't already mention this, we are using my forest floor mix still. So back to the whole YouTuber, favorite YouTubers, plant YouTubers question. Um, I find, and I'm sure this is true of myself as well, that some YouTuber, plant YouTubers are just better at certain things than, than others. I mean, I think we all just kind of have our areas that we excel in. And so there are some that I follow for certain types of videos and information and some that I follow for other types of videos and information. And that doesn't mean that I don't watch any of their other videos, but I just, that's why I follow. I follow them primarily for what I feel like they're the best at. You know, I feel like I'm just rambling my way through this video right now, or at least this question. But I feel like, you know, it's kind of hard for me to pick like favorites or anything like that because it's just so variable. You know, things are constantly changing, but you guys have probably figured out by now that I do enjoy Wild Fern. I know a lot of you guys are Wild Fern subscribers as well. And honestly, you guys, the more of her videos that I watch, the more she just, she reminds me a lot of myself when I was her age. Like just her personality, some of the things she says, she was joking in a video the other day that she's like a grandma and she wasn't gonna go out to the bar with her friends after they went to dinner and bowling for one of her friend's birthday parties. And cause she's like, no way I need to be in bed. I'm totally a grandma, you know, even at my age, that's totally how I was at that age. I'm still a grandma, even at my age. Like I'm like, yeah, you know, that's my bedtime. Sorry, not going out. But anyways, but she also, you know, obviously has great plant advice, beautiful plants. Having lived in Vancouver, BC at one point in my life, I totally feel for her on some of the plant struggles that she has, especially this time of the year with lighting and everything else up there and like the cold and humidity and, and all of that. I did not own plants when I lived up there, but I can just imagine, you know, the struggle, the struggle is real. But so she's definitely someone that I follow. And if you guys are, I know you guys like a lot of my sciencey stuff, you know, and explanations. If you're really into sciencey stuff, I highly recommend Houseplanty Goodness. He really delves into science a lot. He has like an amazing laugh as well. Like one of the things that I like about him. Oh, you guys, you've got me doing this. And I've, if any of the major plant YouTuber out there are watching this, like just know I'm not intentionally trying to leave anybody out, but there's so many people, like I could ramble on forever. I mean, I'm sure lots of you are Harley followers as well. I'm sure some of you probably follow uh, Good and Planty Cat over at Good and Planty. Unfortunately, she is another one of our people who's been a little bit, feeling a little bit burnt out. I feel bad for her. I feel bad for any YouTuber who feels burnt out, but she's 
She's actually still producing videos. She's just back down to, she used to do two a week and now I think she's down to doing just like one a week, which once again, completely understandable. And one of the things I like about her is that she has very successfully incorporated personal vlogging, I guess, into her plant channel. Cause a lot of YouTubers have completely separate channels for vlogging. So for example, Wild Fern has a completely separate channel that she does all of her like vlogging about kind of her, the rest of her life on. Somehow Kat managed to successfully, like I said, integrate it in on her main plant channel and people seem to absolutely love it. I mean, I like it, but I'm just saying other people seem to as well because she gets a lot of comments about people saying, oh, I'm fine just watching what you're doing every day, you know? And that's that's kind of a, a, a massive achievement, honestly, you guys. That's kind of a hard thing to do because a lot of people just want to see plant content. They don't really necessarily care about what else you're doing in your day. And so, yeah, I think that's something that she really excels at. And then I'm trying to think, um, Nick up in Philly, another Philadelphia person, Kat is also up in Philly. He does fabulous videos as well. And he has like, if you want some, well, first of all, he's got so many plants. I don't even know how, how he manages. I do not even, I can't, I, every video where he brings out yet another plant that he's had for who knows how long, that's one I haven't seen him bring out in a video before. I'm like, how? Do you keep track of all these plants? How do you have time to water all of these plants? But he's got a massive variety of plants. He's got just a wide selection of, for example, peperomias. I mean, definitely if you're looking to learn more about peperomias and all the different kinds of varieties, he's got some great videos covering all kinds of varieties of peperomias. And so, yeah, he's another great one. He's kind of also, kind of backed off a little bit in the recent months in terms of like posting. But, you know, once again, we're, we all go through things. People, I think he, his kind of started around like he moved apartments and sounded like things didn't go very well just based on what he has said in his videos, you know, and, and life gets in the way sometimes. So I'm, I'm not faulting any of them. I don't want to, I hope that's not how it's coming across. I'm not faulting any of them or saying it negatively that they're posting less. I'm just letting you know if you go over there and you're like, well, she said she really likes this person or whatever. They haven't even posted in three months. They're taking a little bit of a break. That's it. Just cut them some slack. Watch their other stuff. Trust me, there's years worth of other stuff for you to binge if you're not familiar with them. I'm trying to think. Who else? Oh, uh, Becca De La Plants. Whoa, okay. She made me feel a thousand times better. And this is one of those like misery loves company things, I guess you guys. But when I had my first like really bad outbreak of spider mites in this household, I did find her videos where she had had her first really bad outbreak of spider mites in her house. And just knowing that somebody else got through it, you know, like was highly helpful. Now, obviously I also was interested to see what she had done to kind of combat the spider mites. And I think she kind of had a little bit of a worse infestation than I did. I mean, she actually ended up tossing some plants. I luckily have not had to toss plants before. But once again, just kind of knowing that, you know, somebody else had been through it. It was super stressful to her. It was super upsetting to her. Like, it's not just me, you know, cause that was my first spider mite outbreak. So that was kind of where I first got introduced to her. And so she's another great one. And then of course there is another big OG, Summer Rain Oaks. I'm sure a lot of you have followed her. Now I will tell you what Summer Rain Oaks does best in my personal opinion is produce basically like a PBS TV show. I feel like I am watching a PBS TV show whenever I watch her videos. The quality of the like filming, the quality of the editing, like she's another very sciencey type person in a different way than the guy that I mentioned earlier. I mean, I feel like she's almost even more sciencey like than he is. Once again, all kind of reminds me of like watching a PBS television show in a good way, by the way. I don't know why I feel like everything I'm saying might be taken negatively by some people. None of this is in a negative way at all, you guys. So yeah, so those are like, I guess some of the first ones I got into, some of the ones that I still like follow a lot. There are some other ones, other YouTube plant YouTubers that I check out their videos periodically. I, I don't have time to watch everybody's videos either, you guys. That's the other thing, starting a YouTube channel. And let's move on to our next question, actually, because one of you did ask what's my been my least favorite thing 
about running a YouTube channel. Okay, so first of all, it takes a lot of time. So I have not been able to keep up with as many videos from other plant YouTubers as I have in the past. I just realized I forgot to mention Sydney Plant Guy. Definitely, he's uh, uh, goals. First of all, he lives in Australia and his plants are just all super happy. But if you're real big into moss poles and growing plants on poles and getting giant leaves, definitely he is an expert at that. So you can check him out. But yeah, so least favorite things about YouTube takes up a lot of time. So I haven't been able to kind of stay on top of all the videos that I used to watch from people and whatnot. And then honestly, you guys, this may sound ridiculous, but one of my biggest complaints about YouTube is that stupid dislike button. Why do we have a dislike button? First of all, does anybody remember what a thumbs down used to be? Like when the thumbs down first came out, I'm pretty sure it was on Facebook. There may have been a thumbs down on MySpace. That's right, I just said MySpace. I, you know how old I am, you guys. I, I, don't, I don't hide my age, all right? But thumbs down used to mean like, oh, that sucks. That's what thumbs down meant. Like, oh, you just shared some like non-happy news. Like somebody says, it's my birthday and I got a new car. You hit the thumbs up. That's awesome. Somebody said, my dog just died. You hit the thumbs down because that is not awesome. That is what the thumbs down button used to be. It was not like, I don't like your video. I don't like your post. I don't like your photo. And somehow I feel like that's just what it's become over the years. And it's really unfortunate. And I, I just, it cracks me up because I'm just like within the first hour of releasing any of my videos nowadays, it didn't used to happen until a few months ago. I get at least one dislike and I'm like, well, that was quick. First of all, like how much of the video did you watch? What made you not like it? That's another thing. Like, it's kind of annoying because people hit that dislike button, but you don't know what it was they didn't like. And I'm kind of of the mindset of if you can't, you know, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. Like if you don't like it enough to hit the thumbs up, just don't hit anything. That's kind of how I feel about it. Like I would be happy if that dislike button went away. And I don't, I, I honestly, you guys, I have watched some horrible videos on YouTube, especially when I'm trying to figure out things non-plant related. And I still, have never just been like, oh my God, to the point that I was just inspired to be like, dislike. I just don't get it. I don't get it. Like if I don't like it, I move on. I move on. If it, I think it was stellar and super helpful, I hit the thumbs up button. If I'm like, man, that was mind blowingly helpful. I hit the thumbs up button. I do a comment. And I think if anybody else who could benefit from that video and I send them a link, but I've never hit a dislike button. Like maybe, I can't even, no, I can't, I just can't. I mean, honestly, maybe it seems like a small thing to you guys, but like, I don't know, it's just annoying. It's just one of those things I don't like about YouTube. But I've got this guy squared away in his pot. Let's see, let me make sure I don't have any kind of gaps going on. We are looking pretty good in there. So hopefully he will be happier and start stop throwing yellow leaves at me as well. And he won't need to get a shower down because he's got dirt all over himself, but let me, set him aside and find our next plant. Okay, you guys, so I've got my very large rattlesnake calathea here because the water has just been kind of running straight through when I water this guy. I am starting to get some more yellowing leaves more frequently. And even when the water runs straight through, I basically let the plant sit there and try to bottom water, like absorb it. I'm not really absorbing anything either. And like, he's very close to the edge, as I'm sure you can see in there, very close. All of those stems are close. So I think we are probably pretty root bound, but let's take him out and see what we see. And while we're doing that, let me see. Next question. I get this question a lot. Only one of you actually asked it as part of this Q&A, but I get it in comments a lot. People wanna know how I get my Calatheas, like this one, to look so big, beautiful, and bushy. Let me be honest with you guys. I think the biggest secret to Calathea care, just hear me out on this, everybody thinks they're finicky, fussy plants, but I feel like the secret to keeping them happy is to not fuss over them. They do not like to be fussed over. I honestly have the easiest time taking care of Calathea than I do probably any other plants. I mean, I have a pretty easy time with most of my plants. Once you figure out a genus, I feel like it just becomes easy. But honestly, I, they don't give me massive problems. They never have. I do think if you are a prone person that is prone to underwatering, you are definitely going to have problems with your Calathea. 
They don't like to dry out completely. I know some people say you can let them dry out. That does not mean that they like it. I will tell you that I've heard a lot of people say when you do let them dry out, they aren't happy about it and they tend to attract spider mites more quickly. I don't know if that's true or not, but you know, an unhappy plant will attract bugs more quickly than a happy plant. Now we are definitely root bound. That is definitely a lot of root action going on there. So I am just gonna try to get the kind of excess soil off here where I can. And then we are gonna be using my forest floor mix for this plant again. But in general, if you wanna know all of my care tips and what I do for my Calathea, I do have a video on that, you guys. Unfortunately, <laughs> you know, hindsight's 2020, and it was fairly early on in my channel when I recorded that video. And so that video is titled in a way that does not make it sound like it's gonna tell you how to take care of Calathea because I did title that video prayer plant care, but I didn't mean prayer plants like the plant we just repotted. I meant plants in the prayer plant family and Marantas, which is what we just repotted, are in the prayer plant family. Calatheas are now Gopersha and then like Tenanthes and Stromanthes. I care for all of those plants, all plants I own that are in the prayer plant family the exact same way. So once again, I will link that video in the description below for you guys that have been asking that question. The care that I describe in that video applies to my Calatheas. Once again, every member of the prayer plant family it applies to. If you have additional questions for me after that, let me know and I will point you to a couple of other videos where I also talk more about Calathea care. So the information is there for you guys to check out, but if there's something you want to know in particular that I didn't cover in that video, you can always just drop a comment on that video and let me know. DM me on Instagram or Facebook at Aloha Plant Life and I will help you out. But really you guys, I, I, I do what I do, describe in that video and I don't really do much else. I really don't. They are rhizome based plants, so they create their own new stocks. Like they're they make themselves bushy. Like there's nothing I'm doing special other than keeping them happy. And I can't wait to show you this, like these tubers down here on the bottom of this plant. Like, hold on. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see it very well, but look how big those tubers are and how white, super white. But yeah, once again, rhizome based plant. So it just kind of spreads on its own throughout the pot. And this soil is actually pretty loose. I thought this was gonna be super compacted looking at it, but it's coming off pretty well. I'm not gonna mess with the roots. Once again, though, I just don't feel like Calatheas in general like to have the roots messed with unless you absolutely have to do it. And there are cases where you're gonna have to do it, you guys, you know, if it's in the wrong kind of soil or it's got root rot, you're gonna have to mess with them. But once again, don't be surprised if you do have to mess with them if there's a root rot situation or something like that. Don't be surprised if your plant like potentially dies back all the way to the surface of the soil and then comes back. Because that's the number one thing that I feel like people don't understand about Calatheas is they are rhizome-based plants. So they can die all the way back to the soil and then come back. So don't throw them away. Just don't throw them away. I hate thinking about how many Calatheas get thrown away every single year for like no reason, just because they died back to the surface of the soil and everybody thought they were dead when they would come back. But anyways, back to our questions. Let's see, how many plants have you lost? All your plants look great. Okay, I, I get this a lot too, you guys. Like everybody's like, oh my God, all your plants look fabulous. They look great. They don't all look great. I've shown you guys like my cella Janella right now, like looks the worst out of anybody. Like that plant is not happy with me. And I don't, I don't know. It, eventually it will probably grow back, but it, Definitely not the fastest grower. So yeah, and you know, certain points of the year, some of my plants look better than others. And we go through things like my Picolo Bando that I'm looking at right now, who I had to kind of do a little bit of an emergency repot on a few weeks ago, still doesn't look as happy. I mean, some of you would probably be like, oh, it still looks better than mine. I don't know. But like, to me, he's not looking his best. But to be honest with you guys, I really do put in a lot of time and effort taking care of my plants and it pays off. Like it really does. Like. I know not everybody has the same amount of time to do things the, and the way that I do. Cause like, I'm not gonna lie. Like I take all my plants in here to water them and that takes time. A lot of people don't have that time. So they water their plants just in place where they are. And that's fine. I'm not like hating on anybody for that. Like it's fine. You do what you gotta do. But I will say, I just, I put a ton of time and effort into it. And I do find when I can't put as much time and effort into it, that's when things get a little bit wonky with some of the plants. So that's honestly what I chalk up 
my plants looking good too. Now, in terms of plants I've lost, so I did do a video when I lost my first house plant and that was my first house plant that I ever got, which was just sent as a gift. It was one of those seed things with like the peat moss disc that you hydrate and you grow it in a pot that it came with. It was a annua lunaria, a money plant. And they only live for two years anyway, but we got bad spider mites. Honestly, you guys, it was like five plants in one pot at one point. I still have one. I still have one of them, it's still alive. It's upstairs because we constantly were getting spider mites. Honestly, the spider mites are gone now and we're starting to get new growth. So I think I'm gonna move that plant back downstairs. I do need to do a repot. I did discover after the fact that it is a stolen based plant. So it needs to be in like a long rectangular pot so that it can grow along the ground. So we're not gonna do that repot today, but we'll be doing that sometime here in the near future. And then hopefully I can bring that plant back downstairs. But once again, another plant that's not looking its best right now, but I did lose all of the other plants that were in the pot with that one. I did lose my Petra Croton, which was out back. And that was another spider mite related thing. I was, thought I saw maybe some root rot going on here, but no, we're fine, we're fine. I'm just, there's a hollow spot in the bottom of this, you guys, and I'm just trying to like get the loose dirt out of there. And then I think I've gotten out most of what I can. So now we're gonna move this guy up into a slightly bigger pot. Let me trash this old dirt real quick so it's not in the way. Okay, so like I was saying, lost those, all but one of those plants, lost the Petra Croton, the, Dishidia, no, not Dishidia, Adria, Dichondra Silver Falls that used to be hanging behind my couch that I had told you guys over the summer. Like it just constantly had mealybugs. I think it had them when I bought it and I just didn't see them. And because of that plant being very thick foliage and everything, it just was so hard to try to get rid of them. And the plant was suffering because of it. And it just got to a point where like I was running the risk of them spreading to other plants in my house. And so I ended up moving that plant outside during the summer, hoping, because there was a bunch of ladybug larvae going on out back. And so I was hoping that the ladybugs would take care of the mealybugs. It didn't happen. And eventually it just got to the point where, and I still kept trying to treat it for mealybugs while it was out back, but it just got to the point where I think the mealybugs were just too much for it to handle. I mean, oh, it was so annoying, you guys, like the worst mealybug situation I have ever dealt with. And so, yeah, so that was the third plant that I lost. And then I guess, I don't know what number you would rank that stupid Syndapsis tru Trubii Moonlight. If you know, you know. If you're new here, I don't like that plant. If you have one, I hope you have a better experience with it. And, but anyways, like, that plant was a hot mess. I was trying to rehab it forever. I tried to restart it in water and like nothing would take in the water. And I finally ended up just trashing that last leaf like a couple of weeks ago. So, I mean, theoretically, I guess you could say the plant died a couple of weeks ago since I threw away the last bit of it. But, you know, it, it had problems from the get go when I bought it because it wasn't, I mean, they weren't even barely rooted cuttings, honestly, in a six inch pot of horrible peaty soil. And yeah, anyways, it, it's gone. Good riddance. It's. I never thought I would say that about a plant, you guys. That is honestly the first plant I have ever said that to. Like, good riddance. See ya, bye. Don't wanna have you again. That is just honestly how I feel about that plant. That plant is so bizarre. It is so finicky. I don't know. I, I, some of you got one after I started doing that. Marissa, Marissa in Canada, if you are watching this right now, I would like an update on how yours is doing. Another one of you and... I'm forgetting who else it was. Another one of you, and I'm apologizing right now for the fact that I cannot remember your name off the top of my head, but you also got one from a big box store and you said it was practically root bound. You were super happy that it wasn't unrooted cuttings. I would like to know how yours is doing as well. And anybody else who has one and has, has had it for like more than a year and has had success for it, like comment down below and let me know. Send me some pictures on Instagram make me feel better about this plant because almost everybody I know who's owned one has had the same experience that I had and it was not a good one. But let's see, who else have I lost? You know, you guys, that's the only ones I can think of. I feel like I'm forgetting somebody. I don't know, that's all I can think of right now. If I remember somebody else after this 
point in the video, I will like, you know, flash it up on screen or future Drio will interrupt this video right about now and let you know. But I've almost got this guy filled in here. And this is the last plant that we need to repot today. So let me go ahead and start talking to you guys kind of about kind of how I feel about things <laughs> over this past year of doing this and also kind of my goals um, for the future because there are some things that I definitely need to fill you guys in on. But first of all, I just wanna say I am pretty proud of myself for how the last year went. Obviously, I didn't know how to film a video or edit a video or anything when I started this and I set my goals of like focusing on one thing to get better at every five to 10 videos, I would change what that one thing was. Obviously still trying to do what I improved on the previous batch of, video of videos. And for the most part, I think it's gone pretty well. Now, my goal was to get monetized on this channel a little bit earlier than what happened, but that's fine, we still got there. But based on the amount of time it took me to get to that point of having you know that many subscribers and having that much watch time, I kind of set my next goal for like subscribers and things like that based off of how long that took. And so my goal after that, and that happened in August, by the way, the, my goal after that was basically, I wanted to hit at least 3000 subscribers by the time the channel was one year old. As of the filming of this video, we were at this morning, 3,200 subscribers. So we made the goal and then some. And by the time you're watching this video, we are probably considerably higher than that. So I'm definitely proud of myself for that. I kind of have set myself a goal. And you know, it's kind of hard you guys because I feel like obviously as I'm improving in terms of like knowing how to make do videos better, like not just content wise, but quality wise and things, the more I improve, the more the videos are out there, the more they're getting circulated, the more the algorithm understands them and serves them up to people. Theoretically, like the channel should start to grow more quickly. So I kind of feel like the goal I'm about to tell you I just set for myself for this year is potentially setting it the bar a little bit low, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't have any experience in this. Like I wasn't previously on Instagram doing plant stuff either. I started both things at the same time and I have no idea kind of like if exponential growth happens, like at what rate and whatnot. So as of right now, I am just conservatively setting my goal for this year to grow to at least 10,000 subscribers by the two year anniversary of the channel. And I, I think I think that's doable. Maybe, maybe I'll surprise myself and totally blow that goal out of the water. But once again, I don't know. I don't really have any kind of good benchmark to go off of, you know, right now. This guy is looking squared away and nice. So hopefully he is gonna be much, much happier in there. But yeah, so that is kind of like my goal in terms of growth of the channel. I also just want to work on, you know, the content or the types of videos I'm doing. And honestly, just a reminder, you guys, if there are particular types of videos that you want to see that I'm not doing, you know, maybe it's just not even on my radar that it's something that you guys want to see. So always feel free to comment on any video and let me know if there's a topic you would like to see. Definitely comment on this video and let me know if there's something that you wanna see. And I'll do my best to accommodate it. If it's something that I can't do, I will let you know like, hey, it's not gonna happen right now and here's why. And yeah, and also, you know, reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook as well with any kind of video ideas that you wanna see or, or more of a certain type of video that you guys wanna see. Now, that being said, I need to have a serious chat with you guys. So, I have been a little bit stressed out, especially over the course of the last two months. It is seriously a lot. It takes a lot of time, a lot of energy to do two videos a week on top of having a full-time job. Honestly, it, it's getting to be a bit much. I am kind of finding that I don't really have a lot of time for myself, to myself. I don't really feel like, like I have, I have a book I started and I haven't finished it. I started it like eight months ago. And normally I read like, I don't know, a book a week, at least, at least one every two weeks. And yeah, so I feel like it's just been a lot, but I, one of my goals last year that once again, I'm happy I achieved was to not miss a single upload. I did not miss a single upload at all, there was one video where I had to upload it a day late because I just got overly ambitious with it and I knew I was being overly ambitious, but somehow I still thought I was gonna get it done on time and I didn't. But other than that, I didn't miss any uploads. 
However, there also are quite a few videos that I have wanted to create for you guys that I haven't done it because they require a lot more planning than some of the other videos that I do. And they also are videos where it's like, I can't really like plan a little bit here, plan a little bit there. I really need to do it in sequential order to make sure like I have it all straight in my mind of how I want it to go. And I just, I keep putting those on the back burner because I just don't have time to do those plus another video in the same week. So what I'm getting at, <laughs> and it's kind of funny because I was talking about all those other YouTubers earlier who have taken breaks or cut back. I am going to be cutting back temporarily, not completely, like I'm not going away, don't worry about that. I'm not going off of YouTube. I'm just gonna cut back and I'm, I say cut back. I am going to commit to one video a week for the time being. Now that does not mean that some weeks you might not get two videos still. I am merely letting you know that currently I am only gonna commit to releasing one new video a week. And that's gonna help me because it's gonna also give me some more free time back to myself, but it is also gonna allow me to do some of those videos that I've been dying to do for you guys, but I just haven't had time to do. Now, in addition to that, there are a lot of other things that I wanted to do in the first year that I didn't do. And that is because I was spending so much time trying to get out two videos a week. There are fun, exciting things that I have in the works for you guys. And going back to one video a week is going to help me have time to get those things going. I've got some products that I have been developing over the last year, but I've got to have time to find somebody to partner with to produce them for me so that I can then provide them, you know, for you to buy if you are interested in buying them. And I'm really excited about some of them. Fingers crossed those will come to fruition this year. That is also one of my goals for this year. I'm also working on creating more partnerships with brands that I know you guys are interested in and that you like so that you can have, you know, access to special discounts. I can do giveaways for you guys, things like that. All of that kind of stuff just takes a lot of time communicating back and forth with companies and trying to negotiate deals. Luckily, being a person with a marketing background, having an MBA in marketing and having worked in marketing for over 15 years now, it's it's a way in, like it really is. Like I, I have a different approach of how I wanna partner with companies than I think a lot of other YouTubers do. At least so far, that's what they're telling me. They're liking you know my suggestions that I'm coming to them with. And I have secured one massive, like I'm super happy about this partnership. Can't talk about it yet, but I'm working on more and I have a list of other ones that I wanna work on as well, but I have to have the time to do it. And I don't want it to sound like, oh, well, she just doesn't have time for herself. So she's just gonna like, you know, take off or whatever. It's not that you guys, this is stuff that I wanna do for you. Like this is things that I am going to be able to provide to you to help you out as well, but I just need the time to do it. And the goal is still one day to hopefully be able to quit my day job and then I'll have more free time to be able to like take care of this and not be totally like stressed out and things. And once again, you may still be getting two videos on some weeks, but I'm just gonna commit to one. And I'm gonna release that video on Saturdays, I think, unless you guys have a different preferred day. I've never really asked you guys. Like if I do one video a week, is there a particular day that you would prefer it to be released on versus another? And obviously I'm not gonna be able to accommodate everybody's you know, request of day or whatnot, but comment below, let me know, and I'll see like if we get, most people are like, yeah, Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. Well, good, we'll do it on Saturday. If everybody's like, no, Wednesday, 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 we'll do it on Wednesday. But yeah, that's, that's basically why I'm just gonna cut back to that one video or commit just to the one video a week for now. And honestly, you guys, it, I'm gonna take a vacation here at some point because it's been over a year since I took my last vacation. And I am not going to stress myself out over producing videos for that week I'm gone before I leave. This is another thing that I think is, I don't like about YouTube. And I don't even know if it's YouTube. I think us content creators just put it on ourselves, honestly. It's like we feel bad if we can't just, you know, stay ahead of the schedule and create the extra videos so that while we're gone, you're still getting videos. I don't know that that's really fair to ourselves. And if, you know, YouTube is making us feel that way, that's really not fair either. Because you gotta think about it this way, like TV shows go on a hiatus. Your TV favorite TV show isn't on every day of the year, you know, it's not on every week of the year. It's not on even every month of the year. They take breaks. So I feel like we need to normalize taking breaks on YouTube, especially if we're just talking about a one week break so that you can go on vacation. I mean, I honestly think we're just putting it on ourselves because you guys have always commented when I was running behind on a video or whatnot, 
It's okay, we won't care if you miss an upload here or there. It's fine, we're just happy that you're putting stuff out. I don't think the pressure is coming from you guys at all. I don't think you're gonna be upset if somebody goes on vacation and you don't get a video for a week or two. So I don't know, hopefully that is something that becomes more normalized. And like, like I said, a lot of YouTubers, plant YouTubers are getting a little bit of burnout. And yeah, you know, it's healthy sometimes to just take a bit of a break. But I will let you guys know ahead of time, like if I'm going on vacation, hey, we're not gonna have any videos this week or whatnot. And then we'll be right back to our normal schedule when I get back. But yeah, so that is basically kind of the goals that I have for this upcoming year. And I'm really excited about it. I am also very proud of myself for not getting super emotional in this video. I'm telling you, I totally got emotional in the video before this, just telling you that this video is going to be happening. But once again, you guys, I just, I could not have done this without you guys. Like literally, I could not have done this without you guys. I love you all. You are fabulous. I am happy that our little planty family is growing at a quicker rate now. I love chatting with all of you guys. I love the fact that I still can manage chatting with all of you guys. Like I know at a certain point is probably gonna get to the point where I have so many comments on videos, I cannot answer everybody. So I'm really also trying to enjoy this time that I have right now to be able to engage with all of you. And even if I don't have time necessarily on every video to like write an actual response to everybody like who says anything, I'll at least hit that like button for you. I definitely won't hit that dislike button for you, but yeah. I really have enjoyed this first year, you guys, and I am so excited to see how this second year plays out. But I hope you guys have enjoyed coming along with me today, repotting these plants, answering some of your questions, and celebrating the one year anniversary of the channel. If so, please be sure to click that like and or subscribe button down below, and I look forward to seeing you guys again next time. Aloha!